Um, for those unfamiliar with our SIG, um, we think of ourselves as the operational arm of the steering committee. Um, our goal is to literally look out for the well-being of upstream contributors. Um, and we do this in a handful of ways. These are some of the ways that we are thinking about it this year, uh, specifically uh, making sure that um, non-automated processes were well documented, um, trying to get rid of single points of failure, um, helping to grow uh, contributors, whatever level of experience that they were, and um, making sure that um, our chairs and tech leads weren't breaking their backs more than they needed to, trying to automate more, trying to make their lives easier. Oh, that's big. Oh my gosh, I was like just taking a breath. Like, ah. anyway. So SIG planning, this is the stuff that uh, we as a SIG uh, and its various um, chairs and tech leads do um, from a strategy perspective. Kick it. So we are so close right now to merging a charter. <laughs> uh, I feel like we've never been close on a PR merge in our life at this point. Uh, the charter is significant that I wanted to bring up now. This is something that the steering committee has said that all of our special interest groups need. Uh, the charter really defines our scope, uh, what's out of scope, uh, our roles and responsibilities uh, as members of this SIG. Uh, and what we own as far as docs and code. Um, we have two different uh, folks from the steering committee reviewing that. We're actually at the last round of the first one right now. We actually agree with all of the, uh, the all of the things that Aaron Krickenberger, one of the reviewers, uh, has made mention to for us to change. Uh, and now we're going into the second to last phase, which is with Sarah Novotny, also steering, uh, steering committee member. Um, we also have created a project board. We've also been doing a lot of project management related activities. There are so many projects that are going on right now in contributor experience and it's super critical that we figure out a way to, um, to really put this all together so that we can communicate out better what we're doing and also close in feedback loops and also really give out rewards and recognition for our, our contributors that are doing the hard work here. Some of them are paid full time, some of them are not. So uh, I think it's very important that we do some kind of reward and recognition and I think that's going to actually stem from us having better project management. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip down to that next bullet. We actually put out a, uh, a role recently on our new contributor role board, which LC will get to in a second, um, but this is just a call out for volunteers who wanna take on this kind of project management responsibility. We're thinking like launch timelines, uh, things along that line. Um, we also created a new meeting time that's friendly with Asia. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Pacific, UTC. Uh, 9 a.m. India. Yeah. 9 a.m. India. Somebody do the UTC math. <laughs> uh, 4 a.m. Yes, something. 4 a.m., something like that, UTC. We did that because we do realize that we are onboarding contributors from outside the United States, and we should be friendly to them uh, so we can hear their feedback so that we can close and open those feedback loops from a global perspective. Um, and briefly, we're just gonna be doing a face-to-face -face meeting in 2019, so look out for that. So we're going to break this down by sub-projects. Um, sub-projects are uh, sort of like programs that each SIG, uh, that each SIG has. And in this case, uh, this would be mentoring. Other SIGs have things that are very specific to code. So it's a certain parts of the, the code base that they own and the projects that involve uh, with that, uh, that certain code base. Um, this, again, is mentoring. So we are doing so much work with trying to think of ways where we can enhance the, uh, the contributor onboarding experience, both from a new and current contributor perspective. We do have a lot of casual contributors that have like made a one and two and you know, just like a handful of contributions. Uh, so how do we make their onboarding experience better so that they want to remain active with the group? Uh, so all of these mentoring programs that we've created or that are in flight or what have you answer a lot of those different personas. Uh, and they're all very creative in the sense that we're looking out for our contributors' time. Uh, time, we think, is a killer in mentoring programs. Uh, we just did a survey recently, and it was something uh, very, very high. I think it was like a, I don't have the number off the top of my head, unfortunately. I think it was like a 40% number said that 
uh, they just don't have the time to mentor. And that's really unfortunate, so we are going to hopefully create these programs that will alleviate some of that. One of them, and my favorite right now, is Meet Our Contributors. Meet Our Contributors is a monthly uh, web series that we have on YouTube, uh, and that has anywhere from 75 to 200 plus views a month. And people come on who are uh, current upstream contributors, so anywhere between three to six. Uh, and they answer questions that people would normally ask a mentor. So things like, uh, what's your advice for me on getting to an approver in this SIG? What is your advice to me for uh, picking a SIG? Why is my test flaking? Uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, it really just depends. Like that's the relationships that people want to build. Uh, so we give it to them. Um, that's kind of scalable mentoring. So we're cutting out that like time burden and the like the ambiguous goal setting uh, and everything like that and just giving people what they need. Uh, and I've noticed in Kubernetes especially that as long as we get the new contributors into their first PR, uh, they're usually pretty good at navigating the rest of it. Uh, and then once we get the current contributors on board with the membership process and why they should go up the ladder in the membership process, they're usually pretty on board too. Uh, so it's like, I think we need to just get better at educating those things and, and that's this is where these, these um, mentor programs come in. So we also have the one-on-one -on -one hour and group mentoring. Uh, both of these programs are very new concepts to open source. Uh, I've worked with them in other uh, businesses in my past um, in some kind of format, uh, but the one-on-one -on -one mentoring is sort of like traditional mentoring in the sense where you're going to get matched with someone. However, it's only one time, meaning um, there is not this sense of um, like uh, never-endingness of mentor, like you just don't know when to end. Uh, and then there's also, um, five activities that you can pick from. So therefore, there's goals that are already are already established. There's no ambiguity where you hear, oh, I want a mentor, and then you say, oh, well, why do you want a mentor? What are some things that you want to talk about or achieve? Uh, and then usually you hear, oh, I'm not sure. So it like, alleviates some of this ambiguity. You say, oh, hey, do you want a code-based tour? Do you want a pair program? Do you want an AMA, which is a little bit more ambiguous? Uh, but then the mentor at least knows that it's going to be ambiguous too. So then everybody's on the same page. Um, and then it also alleviates the mentors, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It also alleviates like the mentors, uh, I guess like need to feel like they have to always communicate with their mentee. Uh, so it's just because it's already been established up front, it's one time, one shot. And like, so it's one time, one shot with a maintainer for one hour. And then group mentoring, Really TLDR, it's peer mentoring. And I think a lot of us get a uh, large benefit from speaking to our peers and finding out their experiences. And then also, this is also another one where we preset their goals ahead of time. So if you're, t so we, we take 10 people who, uh, so let's say like the, the test that we ran was 10 members to, um, to, to reviewer. And, so 10 members, two reviewers, and three months. And we took three mentors and we put them in a, pro a private Slack channel so that they could have like a safe learning environment where they didn't feel like they were gonna be knitted. Uh, and they taught them code review skills. Um, at the end of the three months, we had six people graduate into owner's files. Uh, and it was really wonderful to watch them kind of grow together. Uh, and it's very interesting. So the, both of those things are actually in a testing phase. Uh, there's a lot of administrative things that needs to get worked out, especially with the one-on-one -on -one hour. Uh, how we talk to each other about our, our time availability. Uh, like for instance, like uh, it's very hard to like get people's availability these days and calendars are very hard and there's no AP1 API solution that's going to allow us to look into your availability. Jeff's laughing, he's been working on this for months with me. Uh, we've tried Doodle, we've tried so many creative things on like how can we make it so easy for you to go, I wanna link up with this person and I want it done in this time period. Uh, in my experience with mentoring, which has been at least 10 years now, the, the, the part where it fails is the administrivia. That's where it fails. 
So how can we take care of the administrivia in a technology way that makes sense? And then we also have Google Summer of Code and Outreachy, which is really hitting uh, another market for us, which is fresh perspectives. Uh, and fresh perspectives meaning maybe folks that uh, aren't necessarily in the Kubernetes world yet, um, who want to uh, who want and who want to and have a site on being an open source contributor? Um, I'm not going to go too far into Google Summer of Code. I think most of you know that by now, and I know we're short on time. But if you want to talk about it after, that's cool. Um, but some of our best top contributors have actually come from Google Summer of Code. Uh, so it's it's very noteworthy for us to like do this, and I think we're going to do this times ten next summer. Uh, let's try it out. Um, outreachy, we actually did bring on one outreachy uh, individual this uh, this year for our sake specifically. Uh, and Edward is just onboarded last week and he's going to be working on a revamp of our developer guide. Uh, and I just talked to him today, we had a meeting and he's going to split it into two different kinds of personas. He's going to do an upstream uh, developer for Kubernetes and he's going to do uh, a Kubernetes developer building on top of it. So, uh, so we're going to break it down and, and hopefully like clear up some of that ambiguity there. Uh, and then of course KubeCon, speed networking and new contributor workshops. Uh, speed networking allows us to uh, have all of you here in this place already. Uh, so it's not too much of a time burden uh, out of you. If you're already here, you might as well do it kind of an attitude. Uh, so that's that. New contributor workshops. We're actually going to hit in a second with LC uh, with LC review and new contributor playground. Uh, the best thing that I want to have as a takeaway here is to please spread the word about this stuff. Uh, we know that our SIG is large and that we do have some communication issues. Uh, so help us do uh, help us with this. If you see us talking about this, if you see something on the mailing list, if you see me tweet it, if you see it on Slack whatever, help us help our members and help us grow. Okay, uh, so as Paris mentioned, um, we have a new contributor playground. Um, so I know that when I was looking to make my first contribution to the Kubernetes community, I was really intimidated. Um, the community has uh, some unique processes that are, um, they can be really intimidating <coughs> from the outside. Um, and so we wanted to help address this. And so we've recently rolled out this playground to do that. It lets people test out the CI and the owner's files before they make their first uh, contribution to give them that confidence. Um, so they aren't waiting in the wings uh, for months, waiting for that confidence to just magically appear. We boxed this up, we boxed this up and begun to use it with our new contributor uh, workshops that we run before conferences. Um, we did it yesterday, I believe, and uh, to great success. Um, our goal, long-term goal for this, is to have contributors actually start doing these for themselves in wherever they are. Um, so huge shout-outs to Josh Berkus, uh, Gwyn Sanger, and Tim Pepper uh, for getting this kicked off. So the next sub-project uh, if we're going to do is contributor documentation. Uh, oh, as always, we always are working on the contributor guide. That is a, oh, that's you actually, <laughs> shit, my it dad. Is, it's all good. You go, you, you go. go. Uh, uh, go. Yeah, so um, as Paris said, we're always we working on the contributor guide. Uh, we, uh, we have a really good foundation for it right now, um, but as always, this is an open source community. Um, so it's a living document. Uh, please poke holes in it, please review it. Um, we're, uh, as you know, uh, documentation for open source uh, tends to go stale very quickly. And so if we could get some help keeping it up to date, uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, the contributor site, um, we realized that we actually need to rework the cap for it. Uh, when we surfaced our docs, uh, a cap yeah. is Kubernetes. a Kubernetes yeah. Enhance enhancement, enhancement, enhancement proposal. proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Very new stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and so we realized that we needed to rework our cap. Um, and we realized this after we surfaced our docs. We realized that we needed to do some additional docs work to make it, to make it viable. And so we're going to come up with a content strategy 
and a style guide um, to help make that implementation better. And so we're rolling out a working group in the new year. So if that uh, tickles, tickles uh, your fancy, you want to jump on board that train, we definitely need help. Um, and then finally, um, we're looking at doing some more code-based tours. In one of those great Meet Our Contributor sessions that Paris mentioned earlier, um, somebody asked for a code-based tour. And uh, Stitz uh, was wonderful and stepped up and did a tour of Kubernetes Kubernetes. And that's actually become one of our most popular videos that we've published. And so we're looking at doing more videos along those lines. And so if you're interested in giving us a tour of a repo you're really familiar with, uh, we would absolutely love that. All right, community management. Uh, I really think that this is a large part of our SIG. Uh, this is a lot of our transactional work, uh, a lot of our communication pipelines, events, uh, and things like that. We're definitely not going to, I mean, we could do a whole hour, I think, on this topic. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so communication is sort of the sub-project, sub-project, not really, don't quote me, but like that's how I look at it in my head <laughs> of community management. Uh, and we realize that the community at this point is so, so large that we really need to work on a uh, sort of a communication roadmap, if you will, because we do have so many channels. Uh, we just recently did an inventory of them, and we're talking like over 100 Google Groups, uh, Slack, it's like, I think we're like 50, uh, 50 actual pl uh, platforms that we use. Uh, all of them we moderate, we do moderation guidelines. Um, it's, a ext it's definitely extensive. So with that said, we're trying to figure out A, how to reduce that toil, B, how to better document that, uh, and that's all in flight, uh, as you can see from a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff up here. Um, some of the other things that we modify, uh, that we moderate is Zoom and YouTube. This is really how uh, how Kubernetes is so transparent um, because all of these meetings that we have are indeed on YouTube and things along those lines. Um, so we have to do different audits, making sure that SIGs uh, are doing what they say that they need to do according to our SIG governance documents uh, and things like that. Uh, and that's pretty much it on that one, I think. Sake. Um, and then a shout out uh, to George for launching discuss.kubernetes.io. Uh, uh, that was a massive effort, so um, a huge thank you to him. Um, so why we rolled this out was we realized that Slack is a little bit of a walled garden. Uh, you can't uh, really surface a lot of the knowledge in Slack um, via search engine. And so we needed something to bridge the gap. Um, between our mailing list and Stack Overflow, and we really saw that this is where uh, Discuss could fit in for us. Um, and so uh, definitely go check that out and participate. So um, we're going to communicate even more, and this is something that we know we need to work on. And again, I think I touched on this a little bit when we talked about project management with Aaron Krickenberger yesterday in, one of the in the Contributor Summit during the steering committee session said sort of the same about the project in general. Uh, and if we had sort of these like launch timelines and things like that, then we could have communication schedules and uh, all those cool things that, uh, that sort of like big departments do at, at businesses where they have to communicate out those things and changes. Uh, Christoph, our tech lead, is always working on, which we'll hear in a second too, uh, always working on GitHub automation and making the, the process better from a GitHub perspective for contributors. So things are always constantly changing. Uh, and so how can we make sure that those changes are surfacing to you know, at least our top 1,000 contributors? Uh, those are the ones that are in, uh, in the repos constantly. Uh, and we need to make sure that those folks are, uh, are aware of those things. Um, so KDEV, that's Kubernetes uh, dash developer dash development, or no, actually just Kubernetes dash dev at googlegroups.com. Uh, that's sort of the main artery of the project as it relates to decisions on uh, a mailing list is concerned for all contributors. Uh, SIGs have their own mailing list, SIGs beat social interest groups, working groups have their own mailing list, working group, uh, WGs as some, as some people refer them to. Um, and then we also have Slack. 
uh, that we're going to be uh, using, utilizing more, and hopefully maybe even some automated ways. Uh, the blog, uh, we're probably setting up a, 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 our own separate Twitter as well. Uh, and then, oh, I forgot to take that bullet out. That is not relevant to this slide. Next. <laughs> And then events. So this is uh, definitely one of the larger transactional things of our, our group. Yesterday, I'll skip to the last one just because it's so fresh. Yesterday we hosted, or Sunday actually, because it's now a 1.5 day event. Sunday we hosted our Contributor Summit and we had uh, roughly, I think, 370 folks sign up, 320 show, 108 on the wait list. Uh, and we broke it down into 35 sessions, 15. and it was an awesome day. Uh, we are hoping to continue that at, uh, in next year, and we're actually hoping to box up uh, what Elsie mentioned, the new contributor workshop at all of the events. Um, we're a little bit uncertain as to what we want to do for the other events as it relates to an all-attendee contributor summit. Uh, I mean, at this point in time, I think we just don't have the staff, volunteer or paid, to do full summits all year round. Um, for meaning Shanghai, uh, Europe, and a North America date. Um, we also do a steering committee elections. So that happens every year. Uh, I don't want to show of hands, but like, how many of you voted? Like, uh, <laughs> uh, definitely vote. Uh, this is something that uh, we take care of the steering committee. Again, Elsie mentioned in the beginning, we're sort of this like, operational arm of the steering committee, whereas they set the governance, we do the thing, uh, and uh, that's it. Next year, the steering committee actually reduces down to seven from 13. They had a bootstrap steering committee uh, when they formed. Uh, so next year will definitely be an interesting year for us as far as elections are concerned, so watch out for that. Oh, and shouts to George Castro and Eeyore, wherever he is. I don't think he's here for helping us out with running that election last time. Okay, and now we're gonna hand the mic off uh, to Christoph Blecker, um, our technical chair, technical lead. Um, GitHub management uh, and automation. Um, we have, uh, we've made a lot of strides as far as uh, trying to offer a consistent experience uh, across repositories. Um, that was definitely one of our biggest friction points year over year that we've been, been working on this year is to have, you know, we have uh, 170 or so repositories now across 13 GitHub orgs. Um, and ac across all of that, that spans, we want our contributors to have a, a consistent experience uh, when opening up a PR, understanding like the, the steps they need to go through to take their PR from um, code they're submitting to actually getting merged into that repo. Um, we formed, to, to, to do that, we in the last year we formed a GitHub administration team um, that we've staffed with uh, 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 trusted contributors from around the community um, who are uh, able to uh, take action on, on kind of a more, um, a more level basis. Previously, it was mostly uh, a bunch of legacy Googlers who had this this high level of access to things. Um, but we wanted a we wanted the community to own this process. So we have a team now uh, of, of contributors that's able to um, process requests, create repos, and offer kind of a support experience to to those who are trying to um, get things done in GitHub. Um, we also have started automating uh, a bunch of our, our tasks so that. Um, Things like a, you know, a, a basic administrative task that we're doing all the time is inviting new members to our organization. Um, so we have developed some automation around that to um, our membership into the, the, the Kubernetes orgs is defined in YAML files in the GitHub repo along with basically everything else we do. Um, and we have to have a process and, and shout out to uh, Bob and Steven who uh, help us kind of process those membership requests, provide a friendly face to new people mm -hmm. coming in, and then, but I'll, the actual work of, of, of inviting people to the org is now done by a bot. Um, so we can kind of delegate out uh, things that were previously privileged tasks to the community, so the community can kind of own those, those procedures. Um, in the next year, we're looking more at do, doing more automation, doing more um, around that, that consistent experience around the repos and continuously improving that, as, as uh, Paris mentioned. 
Um, in particular, our friction point right now is, is cherry picking. Um, taking, taking a piece of code that you, we've got in master, but actually cherry picking it back to branches. Um, so we're looking at uh, improving that doc we've documented the, the current state of the world, thank you Nikita, um, but we need to go and actually improve that process so it isn't such a friction point for, for contributors trying to get code into our code base. Thank you so much, Christoph. Um, to take us home, we're going to talk about my baby, uh, DevStats. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to chug through this. Um, so in the last year, we've made a lot of improvements uh, to DevStats uh, to make it more useful for the wider community, but specifically the chairs and tech leads. Um, to do this, um, we started out by pruning some of the less used graphs um, and then grouping them into four groups. Um, to make them more discoverable to the wider community. Actually, um, based off of this data, it has informed RSIC in creating a, um, that additional meeting time in Asia because that localization data told us that we had a significant contributor base in Asia and that we needed to start becoming more friendly to that group. Um, in the new year, we're planning on fleshing out the user's guide that we started uh, a couple of months ago. We would really like to create a guide that really lays out um, for leads uh, how to use the, the dashboards um, in their decision-making processes, like a really like a top five graphs for running your SIG. Um, right now, we know that there are a lot of graphs, and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, and so we think that that guide will really help with that. Um, we also want to make the site more mobile friendly. It's a beautiful site as it is, um, but if you pull it up on mobile, it's maybe not the best experience right now. And so we would love to make that uh, a, better, uh, a better viewing um, experience. And with that, how you can contribute. So um, we, uh, dog food of course, so we have good first issues and help wanted labels. The difference of course being that good first issues are for people that have never contributed and are looking for their, their <coughs> entry into the pool. Um, and then for the help wanted labels, those are for people that are a little bit more experienced. And then we also post on the rule board. Um, as Paris mentioned, we recently posted for a project manager, plug plug if you wanna do that for us, we would love that. Oh, we actually um, meet on Thursday. Oh, hi, Michael. No, here it is. Hey, it was hiding. Um, no, we actually meet. I'm meeting with five people on Thursday at KubeCon who responded from the contributor role board, so it works. Uh, that, uh, and we're all going to get together and talk about what we need. So, um, shouts one to the role board and two to us on being on our way with that. So expect actually more roles. We're actually thinking about chiseling out even more. Yeah. Um, we're going uh, to continue to um, try and help the chairs, but the chairs do at the end of the day have um, a responsibility to upload their meetings to YouTube, uh, to fix their Zoom settings, and uh, to continue uh, to give the community updates in the Thursday meetings. And then, of course, file issues when you see problems. Uh, where to find us? You'll find us uh, on w our Wednesday weekly calls. Um, and then, of course, the fourth Wednesday, we have um, that Asia Pacific friendly time. Uh, you can find us in the uh, Contributor Experience Slack channel and on the mailing lists.